How to build a Blackgate Sweet Pea 5 inch gauge locomotive part 72 making new crossheads which are a different size to the ones shown in the book How to build your own steam locomotive I will also show alternative ways to make them Here are a collection of parts that I'm going to use or not use depending on the method that I decide upon First of all I'm looking in the book This is a really useful book if you're building one of these locomotives which as well as containing the drawings, albeit quite small, and need a slight magnification for me at my age, the book also contains step-by-step -step instructions telling you how to do the job. That is, apart from the crossheads. Personally, I disagree with the design of these, and there is an easier way to make them. In my left hand is the original crosshead. This was made by using two steel plates with two spacers in between the plates, which have holes drilled in them to accept countersunk bolts in a very random fashion. Here's a close-up and it really doesn't get any better. This is terrible, I cannot live with this, it is really bad. This method of making a crosshead is more than strong enough for the job, I don't dispute that, it's just the way it looks, not to mention the quality of manufacture. I'm taking some measurements because after all this crosshead fits the piston rods and the crosshead guides perfectly but the job goes downhill from there this was the builder's solution to the fact that one piston rod was longer than the other drill a really clumsy hole in the end so that the piston rod sits further down into the crosshead i don't think so i'm not being an engineering snob with this but there are limits and this manufacture and construction falls into the general heading diabolical I'll put them on one side. I want to show alternative number two for making these crossheads. I've made four metal plates. They are all one and a half inches in diameter, which is not right according to the book. These plates are the commercial items that I bought from Blackgates, laser cut, very accurate, but I really don't like the look of them in any way. At one and a half inches by one and nine sixteenths. They are not one and a half inches square. And in my opinion, even at one and nine sixteenths, the holes are too close to the edge and don't look right. These holes are supposed to be clearance size for 6BA, but they are a bit small and need drilling out. Even by applying the logic that anything is better than the existing crosshead, I'm not going to build my crossheads in this way. More about this in the next episode, but for the moment I will continue. This is a piece of steel which is one and a half inches by half an inch. I'm going to start off by cutting and machining this piece of steel, so I end up with two one and a half inch by one and a half inch pieces of steel. I need to start with an accurate datum, so the piece of steel is in the machine vise of the milling machine, and I'm using an end mill to cut across the front of it. It is vital that the piece of steel bar is clamped into the machine vise very solidly. All of the end faces need to be at 90 degrees to each other. And here I'm taking fine cuts so I get a good finish. This job took a very short time, and when I look at the end product, it's really good. Perfectly square, with quite a good finish. Once I'd squared off the piece of steel bar, I used a felt tip pen and made a mark above one and a half inches. Then I fitted the piece of steel bar into the vise of the bandsaw and cut it to the right size, which is a little bit on the big side. In this clip I'm nearly at the end of the cut, so I'm holding onto the piece of steel so it doesn't fall on the floor. I've owned this bandsaw from new for many years, and it has never cut accurately. I mean, look at this, this is far from square, but it's the best I can do, despite the settings of the actual blade, it still cuts wonky, depending on the size and thicknesses of the piece of metal it's cutting. Here you can see the cut, which is anything but square. I initially cut it over size. This is the digital height gauge that I bought a few weeks ago. It's very cheap and very nasty, but it works, it costs £13. So I'm not complaining, nor am I being tight. I was curious to see whether a £13 digital height gauge was going to be any good, and it is sort of okay. 
It's not very rigid, and as long as you hold the pointer so it can't wobble about, it makes an accurate mark on the work, which is really all I want it to do. Over now to the milling machine, and I'm trimming the block to the correct size. Why did I cut it so far oversized? The answer is quite simple. I make tutorials for beginners and intermediates, and I needed to be able to show a clip like this when I'm actually doing the job. And as you can see, I'm removing quite a lot of metal. Really, this is a little bit over the top without lubrication, but the tool did not burn out. Here I'm sweeping away the chippings so I can see the line, because I certainly do not want to cut below it. On this first block, it needs to be exactly one and a half inches. Really, according to the book, it should be one and nine sixteenths. But I want to make these blocks one and a half inches square. I'd like to mention at this stage that if you're going to make the part one and a half inches square, then you can machine the slot for the crosshead guide in one operation on one piece of metal instead of having to do the same on two pieces of metal. You'll see what I mean in the next episode. Anyway, the blocks are now one and a half inches square. I'm verifying this using a digital caliper. As you can see, it is one thou oversize, but I think I can live with that. Time once again to machine the end of the bar. This is the end of the steel bar that came off the bandsaw, and although it doesn't look like it, it is at quite a steep angle. But a few cuts with a milling cutter levelled it off, and it ended up being perfectly true like the other one. For the next job, I do not need to use the height gauge. All I do is put the existing block against the bar, which has been pre-marked with a Sharpie felt-tip pen. And here I'm using a scriber to scribe a nice shiny line so I can see where to cut to. Before that, I cut off the block oversize as before on the bandsaw, and here it is sat in the milling machine. I've set it back to back in the machine vise with the one that I've already machined, just for reference, so I don't cut too much off. I very nearly overcooked this one and cut too much off, but when I'd finished, it was fine. Both of the blocks are now one and a half inches square. And as you can see, they both fit under the height gauge perfectly. I was quite pleased with this magnetic height gauge because really, for that sort of money, I thought it would be useless or at least break, but it did neither. Both of the blocks were perfectly one and a half inches square. And now you see the problem. The blocks are one sixteenth of an inch too short from the top to bottom of the crosshead. But I'm really not bothered about this because I don't like the position of the holes to start with. I think they're too close to the edge, they just don't look right. And 6BA bolts, for me, are a little bit small for this application. Making a pair of crossheads with a slightly simplified design to a good standard is going to take a bit longer than I thought. That's it for now though, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.